Ever have a power tool battery lasting for only a few seconds, even when it was just fully charged? Well, this is the case, which is pretty useless, so it got me thinking and I came up with a solution that will make this battery last for a few more years. Uh, example that inspired me is electric vehicle batteries. Some manufacturers, after the battery is no longer usable in the electric vehicle, they extend the life of the battery by using it in a low power application. A normal electric vehicle is capable of consuming more than 100 kilowatts, but the most common home will consume less than 10 kilowatts. So after the batteries are not usable in electric vehicles, they're still suitable for home storage for many more years. So I guess you can see where I'm going with this. I created the low power application for this battery so that it's useful for a few more years. And I also made this application safe because when working with this, as I'm gonna show you, can be pretty dangerous. Let's go! I wanna make a product that fits into the battery and I could go on and measure it back and forth but I have a 3D scanner so I can get this done faster and with precision. This is a Revopoint Metro X. It works with laser and blue light and it can scan even a black object without needing scanning spray. And it has multiple modes depending on the type of object that you want to scan and if you want to scan with color and so on. In the end, you need to get rid of the parts that don't matter and perform a few automated and some other manual functions to get the part as you wish and export. Then I import with Autodesk Fusion, add another body to subtract from the battery and I have a battery fitting. I made a few changes to make it simpler and printable. I printed it and now I can test it. And I consider it's pretty okay. It's still a little bit too tight. I may want to give it a tenth of millimeter to make it easier to slide in. This kind of sets the stage for developing the product around the fitting. So I'll now design it to receive the connections, components and functions for the product. Revopoint offered this scanner in exchange for me showcasing it, so thank you very much for that. Um, I'm not an expert in 3D scanners, but after this project I do feel like going around the house 3D scanning stuff. But anyway, please find the link to their website in the description to consider a 3D scanner for your own use and to support this channel. Well, now we need connectors, of course, to extract energy from the battery. I designed the cavities where the connectors and wires will be fitted and give it a test. It slides in and, as you can see, it connects before reaching the limit and then I have another 3 or 4 millimeters of connection, which is okay. Having wires connected to the battery terminals makes it quite dangerous, as I'm gonna show you now. I'll just create a short circuit by joining plus and minus wires while measuring the current. And what you can see is that the battery can deliver so much current so fast that it melts the wires and causes a fire. This needs to be impossible to happen or the application will not be safe. So I continue the development with new connections and this new part that fits on top of the base. I install a fuse and from this moment we can consider it safe. I'm using a 5 amp fuse because I intend to use much less. Yet another step to the project and you can see that I'm needing a switch and a regulator. Well, it's time to reveal what the product will do. It will have this circuit with the regulator and the power switch. The power switch turns on and off thousands of times per second, so 
the power delivered to the load will be proportional to the on time of this switch that the user can regulate. And the load is... a light! Not the most revolutionary thing ever, but very useful nonetheless. I have a CNC machine, so I use it to carve the circuit out of a fiberboard with a copper layer. This is called the PCB, Printed Circuit Board. Not quite printed in this case, but anyway. I solder the components to the board, assemble the board in the housing and connect to the battery terminals, switch and regulator and give it a go. Sorry. I just finished the first functional prototype. I can fit it into the battery, I can turn it on and off, I can regulate the light intensity, all in the desired form factor. As just so happens, in this stage of the project, it looks like a grenade exploded in my office. And, uh, you know, for the next step, which is to design and make everything nicely and product-like, I first need to clean everything up to set up my mind for the creating a nice thing. So, let's go. On the new version of this part of the housing, I have a fitting to put the PCB just right. How cool is that? But sooner than later I found a big problem. The LEDs are becoming a bit too hot. I have to do something about this. So I decided to change the circuit, just this resistor here and by the way you're welcome to download the schematic and PCB design from my website. The purpose of changing that resistor is to limit the on time of the power switch. The maximum brightness also decreases a little bit, but it's still pretty good. It doesn't get hotter than 60 degree Celsius now, so it looks good to me. So let me show you the polished design. It has this part that is made to fit into the battery and house the terminal, switch and regulator. Then this middle part that holds the PCB and LEDs. And finally the top part that closes the box with this window that I'll print in transparent plastic to let the light through.
I tried to summarize as best as I could this project for the video, but the fact that it's a lot more work than it seems getting this done and many iterations until I was happy with the result. Of course, you still need the new battery for your power tool, but the old one, you get to use it for a few more years until you send it off for recycling. And if you want, you can use also your light with a new battery and I am super happy with how this turned out. So I made four of these and put them for sale. It's not an original product. I actually checked the local hardware store and they have one for 40 euros. I checked AliExpress and they have one for 21 euros. So I decided to price mine in the middle, 30 euros which I think is pretty good because I actually think it's nicer. It has this craft feeling and it has a warm light that you can regulate to illuminate or make a mood light. I think it's nice. And I share the schematics and the 3D files. I don't know if there will be interest, but if there is, I'll make a new video with the improved version and put more for sale. <laughs> Please subscribe to my channel.